Okay, hello. Um, I'm here to do for you uh, homework number one. And I'll see how far I get in this first video and hoping this helps you. And uh, this also saves time and uh, makes it so I don't have to spend class time going over these problems. So I hope this helps. Uh, so number one says consider a Boolean function with the domain of the set 0, 1 squared. Uh, okay, and uh, the range of this function it asks for part A. And the hint is all Boolean functions have the same range. And indeed, uh, suppose we call this function f, then all Boolean functions have a range of 0, 1. So first we map the domain. This is what's given to us. The domain is mapped to the range. And all Boolean functions have the same range which is just the set 0, 1. So the range is equal to the set 0, 1. Okay. Uh, next it asks, uh, how many elements does the domain have? And so here's our domain. And the number of elements in a set is denoted by using absolute value signs. So there's part A. Here's part B. And so to answer this, how many elements does the domain have? I'm going to write out the set, which is the domain, and put absolute value signs on it, and then evaluate that. And if you recall, I hope you do, that when we square, it looks like we're squaring a set. We're really doing the cross product of that set with itself. And the size of a cross product is the product of the size of the sets. And obviously the size of each of these sets is 2, and so the size of the domain is 4. And you know this is sort of a fancy way of writing it, but uh, that's this is correct mathematical statement here. Uh, part C says write the elements of the domain out and to simplify the notation, uh, use uh, this notation of, of just zeros and ones next to each other there, rather than putting them in those uh, little ordered pairs or lists. And so the domain, which is 0, 1 squared, can be written like this. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Okay. Finally, calculate the total number of Boolean functions uh, with this domain. Carefully explain your answer. And I did do this one in class. And we're going to use what's called the product rule for counting. It's saving. There you go, product rule uh, for counting. And what we do here is we say, look, when we make the uh, the table for this function, we would have a p and a q because we have a 2 here, n is equal to 2, and we have our function f. We have four possibilities uh, for the inputs. Okay, you can think of this f as f of p and q here because it has n equals 2 inputs. And so we have four possibilities for the input. So we have four possibilities for the function value. Uh, each one could be either 0 or 1. Okay? And so the number is the product of the number of ways that we can construct this function. And I'm going to write the product of a four-step. We have a four-step process of, of defining an arbitrary function of two variables. And so we have uh, we have four steps where we choose a zero or a one for each of these output values, and there are two two choices at each step, and so I multiply two times two times two times two, two to the fourth, which is sixteen ways. Okay, so that's problem number one. Um, and so now I'll move on to problem number two, and 
This one won't take nearly as long because this is just the same problem with n equals 3, you can see here. Um, and so the range, so we'll write this function as mapping the domain 0, 1 cubed to the range, same range for all Boolean functions, like that. We could write it as f of p, q, and r if we wanted because n is equal to 3. So we have three input variables. Uh, so what is the range? Is equal to 0, 1, as, as it is for all Boolean functions. For part b, how many elements does a domain have? The size of the domain uh, is written as absolute value on that set. And this is um, we can write this several different ways, but we could just uh, write 2 to the third, which is 8. And we get that, if we wanted to, ex to expand this out, we could write it's the size of the individual set cubed, which is 2 cubed, okay? And that's because the size of A cubed is the size of A cubed. Okay? Part C, it says write all the elements of the domain. And so I'll write it out like this. There are going to be eight of them. And I'll put them in order like this. This is sort of the binary order. Uh, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1, 1. And I always double check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Finally, for part D, when I uh, want to count the number of Boolean functions, again I use the, the product principle. We construct um, <coughs> an arbitrary function f of p, q, and r in eight steps. And we count how many ways there are to carry out those eight steps. And so it's first step, uh, we're going to choose f of 0, 0, 0. The second step, we're going to choose f of 0, 0, 1. Third step, we're going to choose the output for 0, 1, 0, etc. And at each step of the way, we have two choices for the function. So I'm going to have two 8 times, 2 to the 8th, or 256 possible functions. Uh, F of P, Q, and R. Okay, uh, I think that's enough for one video, and I'll pick up on problem three with the next video. Thanks for listening.